Welcome to the 8 p.m. news on Canada English with me, Annette Fiti Sume. Our top stories for tonight modalities for the recruitment of 2,000 doctors and professors as lecturers into state universities in Cameroon have been made public by the Minister of State for Higher Education. Over 1 million pangolins have been exploited between the year 2000 and 2013. What has provoked outrage amongst forest conservation groups? Primary health care is being discussed by actors responsible for 40% of health coverage at the 9th annual conference of the African Christian Association platform Holden in Yawundi. Developments will be yours right ahead. You're welcome to the 8 p.m. news on Canal de English and the modalities for the recruitment of 2,000 doctors and professors as lecturers into eight state universities in Cameroon have been made public this day by the Minister of State for Higher Education. The candidates who should be below 45 years as of October this year are to apply only to one university, latest May 21st. For this 2019, 1,000 would be recruited after thorough scrutiny of files, 500 in 2020 and another 500 in 2021. This will be based on meritocracy. The petition is as follows. University of Bamenda, 132. University of Boya, 130. University of Douala, 127, the Chang University, 109, the Marwa University, 102, the Gandhari University, 130, Yawunda 1 University, 130, and Yawunda 2, 100. The Vice President of the Collective in Charge of Valorizing Employment in Schools in Cameroon and Abroad throw more slides on this distribution. Let's now listen to the president of the collective in charge of valorizing employment in schools and com in Cameroon and abroad as he throw more light on the distribution of the lecturers. According to the distribution, I think it's equitable because, you know, in the universities, there's no, there's no equal need. Some universities are new, and some other universities are older. So, let us take, for example, the University of Bamenda, which is a newest, the, the newest university in our country. That university needs more than some other university, such as the University, university of Yaoundé One, maybe. So, I think the repartition, the distribution of those posts was not equal, but I think the distribution was based on equity, according to the need of any or every university. The vice president of the women's wing of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement has spent her first night in custody. Michelle Ducky was arrested yesterday in the southwest region of Cameroon. Details on this with Ndi Murray. The director of the judicial police in Yaoundé has confirmed the arrest of Barista Michel Ntoki of the Cameroonians movement. According to Barista and Don Christopher, Secretary General of the party, the judicial police is still to disclose where she has been detained in Yaoundé. The part of Professor Maurice Camto has condemned what they described as the abusive arrest of the outspoken, devoted militants of the party. Reliable family source has told Canal de English Television that Barista Ntoki and her husband was arrested in Edinao in the west coast of Limbe in the southwest region, Tuesday, February 26, 2019. According to our source, Barista Ntoki was heading to Nigeria for intensive medical care. Note that she was shot on the 26th of January in Tuala on the day of a nationwide protest organized by the CRM party to denounce 
electoral holdup by the regime in place, stand against the embezzlement of funds for the construction of football infrastructure for Afghan 2019 and the war in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon. The arrest of Barisa Michelle Ndoki is, is a second issue she has had with the judiciary in Cameroon in less than three months. Earlier, the Bonanjo Court of First Instance dropped charges of initiating public protests against her. The arrest of Michelle Ndoki has mainly increased the number of militants of the CRM party kept behind bars by the regime in pleas. With analysts say it might be a calculated move to silence the party. The CRM party lawyers say they are waiting to get reasons for the arrest of the lawyer that has gained immense popularity in the political landscape in Cameroon. The ninth annual conference of the African Christian Association platform is currently holding in Yawundi. The one-week conference is holding under the theme Reigniting Primary Health Care and the focus by actors that are coming together. These actors are responsible for 40% of health coverage in their respective countries, as you hear in the following report with Beatrice Gamo. Christian health associations in Africa are strategizing on how to bring back primary health care in the various countries. The focus of the African Christian Health Association platform are trapped in its ninth session on the way in Yawunde, Cameroon. Because churches constitute the backbone of health systems in many countries in Africa, contributing about 40% of the healthcare delivery in each country. ACHAP is like a, a coordinating body that tries to push for good healthcare in the countries where churches are found in Africa. But which unfortunately is a big challenge today, especially in these African countries. The need to reignite primary healthcare, which is a sector of almost no interest by health specialists, but very important to the population, priority for ACHAP is to motivate countries, stimulate them to uh, practice quality care to all in their respective countries, especially focusing on the poorest of the poor and also focusing on primary health care, which is the kind of care that everybody needs every time and everywhere. Coming in actual African context with many financial difficulties and weak health coverage, Reinforcing health services will give many people access to their primary health care, especially those in the rural zones. The government and the Christians, that is the church, needs to work hand in hand for this to be true here in Cameroon. Reed Reitz, the representative of the Minister of Public Health, during the opening of the one-week conference, conference coming at a time also when Cameroon is working towards universal health coverage which supposes that health care be available accessible and affordable at all times for the population and the church like the light of the community have the mandate to offer exemplary health care to all with genuine compassion over 1 million pangolins have been exploited between 2000 and 2013. These figures were disclosed as some forest conservation groups met to decry the exploitation of these animals, saying enough is enough. Tabby Claxon reports. A one-day workshop to map out strategies on how to fight against the illegal exploitation of pangolins recently took place in Yaoundé. Pangolins are reported to be the most exploited mammals, and if this was to continue, then in 10 to 20 years to come, we shall no longer have pangolins. We don't count the domestic market, which is today forbidden because Cameroon has placed the pangolin in category A, which means it is completely protected. Um, but unfortunately, um, the, the information is not yet out, so one of the work we need to do is to exercise people to understand that it is now the law, and the law needs to be applied. From the year 2000 to 2018, over one million pangolins were illegally exploited, and governments and conservation groups think enough is enough. So it is important for us to make sure that all the actors in the field are working for conservation, especially for this uh, species, 
are aware of um, the environmental issue that uh, the loss of these species can cause. So uh, this is one of the things that give us the opportunity to put in place uh, some uh, preliminary meetings with uh, stakeholders, partners, for us to have today uh, to be in place and uh, talking about having a pangolin working group in, in Cameroon. Organizers of the workshop have promised to continue working hand in gloves with the government so as to prevent the harvest, the hunting and the consumption of pangolins. Cameroon's Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Baka people of the East region. The convention is to give the people more voice in managing protected areas in the region and fight against poaching. Regina Leke Fonja Tanda has details. By this handshake, the people of Baka have officially entered into an understanding with the Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife to ensure a sustainable management of protected areas where the rights of the indigenous people are respected and they too have a say. The aim of that uh, mutual engagement of the two parties is to ensure that Baka indigenous population are more involved than at the past in the use of sustainable um, sustainable forestry and wildlife uh, health. So um, we have signed that convention and we are going to make everything to make sure that those populations are more are participating more actively in our in their activities very close to what we are doing in the protected areas. After the classification of the Lobeke, the Bomba, Beck, and key national parks in the East region, the Baka people have always expressed their wish to perform the ancestral role. Since 2006, with technical assistance from the Worldwide Fund for Nature, the local people have been working towards formalizing their interactions, which became a reality this day. The people's capacities will now be built. In case of our, uh, our good friend, the Baka, we know there will be need for uh, capacity building. So given them the, the, the capacity that they need to do their, their share of responsibility, to ensure that their, their rights are, are, are respected, then they have a voice, then they are heard, then they also do participate on a daily basis in the, their part of the, the management of uh, protected area. The Baka people say this memorandum of understanding will be a legal tool to fight poaching common in most parks. We are very happy because the Minister of Forestry has validated this document. Through this document, we will better fight wildlife trafficking. This forest is for us. It is our source of livelihood, and so we need to protect it. We cannot stand and watch it destroyed. The MOU immediately enters into effect after the signing. In line with activities to mark this year's edition of Common Wolf Week, the Ministry of Environment Protection and Sustainable Development has sensitized some young Cameroonians on how to make waste useful. This was during a workshop that held in Yawundi, as Tabi Clarkson reports. How to make proper use with bottle and paper plastics? This question was at the center of a workshop that took place this midday at the Roger Milaker d'Afrique Foundation at the Olembe neighborhood here in Yaoundé. The workshop falls in line with activities marking the Commonwealth Week. We are part of the environment and the sustainable management of the environment is an, a very, is an, a, an important issue for us. And so it is important to include youth in the process because by uh, involving youths in the process, we are sure that the generations to come would live in a way that 
uh, can guarantee that the environment is sustainably managed. Waste plastics are waste, but very important. And for the students of schools and colleges who took part in the workshop, they will henceforth make use of plastics. When we take our plastics, we are not supposed to throw them or to put them as waste, but those same waste that we think they are waste can be converted to do many other things. I've learned how to make pavements with plastic using these are plastics bags and sand and other things. For example, I didn't know that we usually use plastics in order to make the pavement, the buildings in our schools, construction of wood. In the Ministry of Environment, no stone is left unturned as to what concerns plastics. We are behind a structure, a unit that is recycling plastic. So why are the students here? We want to see, you are handing over experience or issues. If you follow the, uh, what we are saying as presentation, we are trying to make the youths understand that there's a problem, and the problem here is waste, and the waste we are talking about is waste that they can involve inside, indulge as, as, as youth to get into the activity and make a better living for out of it. The environment must be protected, and the Commonwealth is out for a greener, for a greener environment. The Minister of Mines, Industry and Technological Development has instructed managers in some companies in the three northern regions to beef up security in their respective companies. He has also promised to set up a platform that will enable managers to better collaborate. He was speaking during a working visit to some companies in this part of the country. Crystal Catala. After Betwa. Figil, the Minister of Industry and Technological Development, storms Garua. Major objective, visit companies and assess level of security. The Cameroon Cotton Development Corporation, the Cameroon Textile Company, the Bravery Company, Brasseries Cameroon, and the Cement Factory were all visited. We have to be conscious where we work because the least incident we can lost an employer. So we are called daily to be in order because we are the forefront. So concerning security, there are several innovations. This trust towards us is really rejoicing us and galvanizing us before and encourage us to work. We are very happy. Before the company, we have gone through a lot, but now things are better. We have new equipment for the company. During his tour, the minister gave recommendations in some companies where some technical problems were raised. I am going back with a positive impression. We had the opportunity to visit organized enterprises and the framework of the implementation of security measures and the protection of the environment. It is true that means put in place were not the same in all the structures. We have registered an important need of mutualization and we believe at the end we are going to set up a mutualization and exchange platform to permit everyone to be at the same level. Minister Gabriel Dodondoke visits in companies in the Grand North, gave him the opportunity to have an idea of their functioning. He has also promised to organize a platform where managers will have the opportunity to share ideas. On to the societal news story where a young man has been administered mob justice this afternoon behind Commercial Avenue in Bermuda. The unidentified man has been accused of perpetrating about three acts of child kidnapped and demanding ransom in return for the release of, for the release of his captives. He is said to have been passing for an Amazonian fighter. Nigerian opposition leader Atiku Abubakar has said he will challenge the results of the presidential election in court. In Cameroon, Nigerians have, who have settled in Cameroon have described Mr. Buhari's victory as unfortunate. They, however, hope he can do more to revamp the nation's economy. Regina Leke Fonja Tanda talked to some Nigerians living in Cameroon and now reports. 
The declaration of incumbent president Muhammadu Buhari as winner of Nigeria's elections has sparked different shades of reactions from Nigerians across the globe. In Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, where Nigerian businessmen have settled, the outcome makes some unhappy. I would have hoped that uh, the PDP presidential candidate would have won because of the um, of what they plan to offer to Nigeria. But given that Buari was re-elected, then I would expect him to bring about a reintegration of the country and to put an end to some of the gruesome killings that has been happening in Nigeria and also to to help econ help improve the state of the economy of 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 Nigeria. Some claim the elections were real. I'm not happy over the victory of Buhari because uh, from every indication it shows that uh, that election was rigged in Nigeria. Every look and corner, everybody saw what happened, even on the social media. You see how they were rigging, carrying money or left and right, intimidating people not to vote. For some, the presence of Nigerians everywhere, with many being deported, is indicative of how the nation is struggling. Nigeria being deported from Ghana, Nigeria being deported from Libya. This is not a country like Nigeria. This is not what we are supposed to be seeing in our country. Nigeria is a giant of Africa. We are supposed to have most all Africans coming in our country to live fine. Instead, we are the one going all over the world to see for greener pasture. No matter what their opinion is, Muhammadu Buhari will head Africa's most populated nation for the next four years following the declaration of the elections body in NEC. For these reasons, Nigerians have some expectations. Because there's, I think he has a lot of work to do. I think, I think if he truly wants the good of Nigeria, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. So in terms of economy, in terms of, um, um, in terms of security, Yes, I think those are two major areas. Some think rebuilding the economy should be key in his agenda. I expect from him, I expect for him to to make Nigeria great, unlike before, to make our economy be number one in Africa. Because people are suffering. Nigerians are suffering all, all over the world. You can see by yourself. When you go to Nigeria, you can see the suffering there. Even in, even all, the Nigerians is, 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 is this scattered all over the world. So Nigerians are suffering. If, if Buhari can arrange the economy of Nigeria, it will, uh, it will be good. Muhammadu Buhari, who is in his late 70s, suffered severe health issues and corruption scandals, which his PDP opponent, Atiku Abubakar, was hoping would work against him. Atiku is currently challenging the results in court, describing the outcome of the presidential elections as fake. Other news item before we draw the curtains. Authorities in Kenya are struggling to contain fires which are spreading on the slopes of Mount Kenya, destroying vegetation and killing wildlife. Although it's not yet known how it started, the fires are spreading due to high winds and extremely dry conditions. The flames are said to be dangerously close to a forest which serves as a vital water catchment for millions of Kenyans. This information brings us to the end of the APM newscast tonight on Canal the English. Thanks for watching.